What is up guys, Sharpen here. Now as you know, from now on my tutorials are being voted on, which means you guys literally get to decide what's being posted on this channel and what kind of tutorials you want to see. Now due to my absence on YouTube because of work, there's been a lot of tutorials piling up in the tutorial suggestions. That resulted in a lot of tutorials and not enough time for me to make all of them. That's why I decided to include most of those tutorial suggestions in this video. If you don't understand them, you can ask for them again and I'll make a separate video on those as well. I'll be accepting suggestions in the comment section or on my Discord server, as usual. Now before we dive into the topic, I want to ask you to leave a like on the video or suggest it to a friend of who you know is a Minimator user. I'm just trying to be helpful here. Now with that on the side, let's get in the video. Tip number one, you can create a nice stop time effect using particles and all that with a very simple feature. Simply go to your particle creator and change the attributes from spawn particles to stop spawning and freeze particles. You can move the camera and everything you want but the particles will stay still. Now I know this is not particularly special but a lot of people don't use this technique when they should and I thought it would be a fun little tip. If you're using a running or walking cycle and you encounter the foot sliding flaw, if we take a look at this part, you see his legs are sliding on the ground, he's not keeping a solid contact and he should be moving faster than he is right now. What you can do is simply bring up the final point and move your character further away from the starting point until you're happy with your results. Now most of you already know this one, but you can create a nice arc by placing your desired object in a folder, then moving the object into the desired direction. After that, create a start and the end point of your folder and raise it up in the center. You then get this triangular shape. From then you can give an ease out to the first keyframe and the ease in to the second keyframe of your folder. That will make a nice arc. The shape of the arc is determined by the height and the distance. By that logic, you can also place your character in a folder in minuscule things like, for example, this running cycle which we had just seen. Now obviously the center point is offset from your character, but this isn't gonna matter too much because we only need the up and down axis. So if I move him up, you see, the Steve applies the motion as well. You can also move him up to prevent him going through the floor. When you're done, you can also ease them. When you're done, simply copy the frames and paste them. If you want to create a nice explosion, I first recommend you animating all its basic components. As you see, we have four spheres with different alpha values, so they create a nice blend outside. They're also being affected by winds, so their uh, shape isn't too perfect. Then we have three inverted cones, also with alpha. Then we have two cylinder lasers, built in the exact same way, animated. Of course, I place them in a folder and rotate it so, so when time passes, those two cylinders are going to be moving around your explosion, making it look like there's energy flowing inside or something, I don't know. After that, we have this nice little shockwave texture that I found online, and when the explosion starts, bam, the shockwave goes all around the explosion, slowly disappearing when he reaches the edge. Then we also have the particles which appear once the explosion starts, so this is getting laggy. And as a tip of the iceberg, when the shockwave reaches the camera, give it a little bit of a camera shake. So at the end, your explosion should look pretty damn powerful. You can also achieve a nice glow effect with depth of blur. If you want to create nice volumetric clouds, first summon a cube and have its rotation point slightly off-center to be in the ground. Then open your background tab and turn off the actual clouds. Then. Invert the cube and bras for a cloud texture. You should have this now. Then scale your clouds up and presumably scale down the Y. Maybe move it all a bit up so they're positioned nicely. And after that, copy your cube and scale it up a bit and decrease its render depth. Copy that cube, scale it up even more and decrease its render depth. Adjust all positions. Repeat the process. After a couple of steps, you should see beautiful volumetric clouds. You can create a pretty nice underwater ambience using the simplest of components, which I will show you right now. What you need is a water texture, which you can draw yourself and stretch to infinity. It should also be affected by wind. 
a surface below the water texture which is also affected by wind but has a water color so it's not visible from below the surface. An inverted cube surrounding your area preventing visibility from beyond the showcase. You also need to create some fog with the same color. And finally, you can use some water bubbles to make it all appear more underwater. You can use other particles or even add fish and squids. The final product is pretty amazing for the amount of work you put into it. It's pretty simple and it's pretty damn nice looking. If you want to replay one part of the animation over and over again, you can do so by selecting the timeline by holding down your right click. When you play it, only this part of the animation will loop. Of course, you gotta have this little square up here selected. If you want to remove that, simply right click anywhere on the timeline. And yes, that was just a divided four spoiler. You can create a nice looking volumetric lighting using nothing but a gradient texture. Simply place all of your gradient rectangles to align both with the window and to the place where the light is falling on the image. Now again, I added two just in case to get that nice edge out of the way. If you want, you can add a white surface behind the window, brightness 100%, alpha 50%, so it kind of brightens up your window. Also, you can achieve better result using depth of field. If you want to get the PCSS shading in my animator, if you don't know what PCSS means, it's basically just the shadow getting blurrier the further away it gets from the object. The way you do this is simply turn the sunlight color to black and add multiple amounts of spotlights directed at your target. Also try to mess with the spot radius because if it's too high, then the start of your shadow will already be blurred. If it's too low, well, then this happens. Try to keep it just right. If you want to create a hole in the ground where there is no hole in the ground, simply do the following. Add a surface and a cube to the animation. Invert the cube, lock the surface onto the cube, position the surface above the cube, you should get this. Move the entire thing in the ground, and now make the surface almost transparent. Leave it on 1%. Then reduce the surface render depth below 0. Go to the cube and reduce its render depth lower than the surfaces. The surface will automatically adjust, so uh, adjust it back. And basically, you have a hole in the ground where there was no hole in the ground before. And let's say this is your hole. This is called the alpha glitch and I also have a tutorial on that so you should check that out if you want to learn more about it. This is just a brief explanation. All the links will be in the description below. If you want to give your character a two-sided extrusion, you don't need to draw an extra item for this part. Let me demonstrate. You can simply scale the Z and move it back further. Now this created a similar effect except now that this face of the texture is stretched. So, be careful to only use this technique when you don't need to have a visible texture on this side of the image. Let's also adjust that a little bit. There, now that's an MLG Steve. Now let's say you drew two separate items to have this corner intruded, yeah? Well, you're wrong again, you don't need to do that. If we have these regular glasses right now, we can simply copy them again, move them backwards, scale the X a little bit, scale the Z a little bit, a little bit more, move them backwards and you just made this nice little corner using two glasses. Now if you see there's another pair of glasses in there hiding inside of the face but it's scaled in a way to only give off an extrusion at this part. That's one MLG Steve. Now I decided to give my Steve a random red sleeve out of five separate items for each face but when I try to bend Steve's arm this happens. Well, if you're encountering this issue, you should probably select all your sleeves and go to the hierarchy options and untick the lower half. So now, it should jump up a bit, but now it's locked onto the upper half of your arm. So if I move this down right now, there. Now when the Steve bends his arm, the sleeve should stay in place, but it will rotate if you rotate the upper arm. One more thing, you should probably put all of the sleeves in a folder so you can organize it better. Don't forget to call the folder sleeve and lock it onto the upper arm. Now this is essentially the same tip as I already showed you before, but I want to show you how to use it in practice. These two sleeves are useless, we only need one. Delete one of them and place this one in the center. What you need to do is scale up its Z until it reaches the same place. 
you are using half the amount of items and getting the same result. You can do the same with the other two. So delete one, select one of them, put it in the center. Now extrude the Z enough to cover this stretch texture on the sides. This should be just perfect. I used to have five items, now I only have three. If you want to create a quick daytime lighting, the recommended settings are you have your sunlight color slightly yellow and you have your ambient color a desaturated dark blue color. The recommended night settings are keep the daytime, have your sunlight color be a light desaturated blue, have the ambient color drop down even darker, turn off the clouds and create a giant inverted sphere with a night sky texture and have it cast shadows off. You should pick for a high quality image though because this doesn't look too good. Both of the lighting settings you've seen in this video were recommended by me. It's not 100% accurate, but this is what I use most of my time, so you can do whatever you want with this info. If you want to trip over a block, I recommend you do the following. First, change the custom rotation point to all 8. Then raise the block up by 8 units on the Y. Now it's in the same place, but it has a rotation point from the center. Next, go forward in the timeline and rotate your block 90 degrees, so it's on the same place. Move the corner of your block to be on the same place as the previous corner was before, so it looks like it tripped. If you play this, doesn't look the best, so we gotta help ourselves with a folder. Put the block in a folder, set the start and the end point, and go to this middle frame here. Raise the block upwards, and give the first one an ease out, and the second one an ease in. If it doesn't look the best, try searching for other options. If you want to create a nice render, you should also mess with the render settings under the settings panel. First, see your SSAO range. If you don't see much difference, then try to increase the SSAO power. You will see what that is. On every corner where two blocks meet, there will be a black overlay. So by increasing the power and decreasing the radius, you can have something like this. Increase both and your world is now corrupted. You can also change the color to have different colored SSAO if you're looking for results like that. I usually keep the radius on 23 and the power on 110. By the way, if you decrease the blur passes, you will get this little 8-bit looking kind of thing. Next thing is shadows, you probably want to keep that on, unless you're doing something like this, which includes SSAO again. Then the buffer size, I usually keep the sun on gigantic, the point spotlight on gigantic and the point light on big, but be careful because this might consume your RAM. Shadow blur quality is basically the quality of the blur in your shadows. Shadow blur size is the size on how much they will blur. If you're using a camera, you can increase or decrease the depth of field blur. I keep that on 3. And finally, the AA. You can either decrease it or increase it. You won't see any difference except if you take a look at the edges. This is the default, this is no AA, and this is the maximum AA. So you can basically have like sharp edges or blurred edges. I usually don't mess with it, keep it on default, but if you want to create something like this, then obviously you can, so knock yourselves out. That was it, 18 useful tips in my meter. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and I hope you left that like as I asked you in the beginning of the video. Now you should join us in my Discord server if you want to suggest your own tutorials, or leave a suggestion in the comments below. Also, let me know if you want me to dive into each of these tips in particular, and I'll be sure to make a video on that as well. So thank you for watching, and stay sharp!